Hey guys, welcome back. It's Tab Sleep Lover, and today we're going to be doing another abstract painting. This time we're going to be doing the, all the design techniques, but we're going to be focusing on yellow as our primary color. So we're going to add more yellow. We're going to have that hierarchy of all four colors, red, yellow, blue, and green but we're gonna color balance it so it looks nice. So Van Gogh used a lot of yellows, so we're gonna see if we can match his color theory and, and see if we can create something equally magical, perhaps, maybe, more colorful, maybe not, but we'll see what we end up with. So I've got the canvas prepped here, and if you've seen other videos, we've got the modeling paste underneath, that's the first layer, and then I've got this base layer of grays on there. Doesn't matter what color you add on here, but keep in mind whatever color you do have on here, when you scratch into it, it can be revealed underneath the next layer that you put on there. So the next layer I'm gonna put on there is gonna be mostly yellow. So when I scratch this off, the blue will show through. So let's just start adding the yellow and we'll go from there. I'm just gonna try and brush on some of this and then I like to scrape it on usually. So we'll try different approaches, but you see how we get different effects when you brush it on. You got these little ridges coming through from the modeling paste. We'll try and keep that. I'll switch to the palette knife here. Let's keep going. I've got all my colors laid out here, but I've got several different yellows. And then it's going into the oranges, the creamsicle orange, pinks, the reds. Then I've also got grays. I've got this grayish red, grayish yellow, grayish pink. And then this is the purple, but it's pretty grayish looking like a blue got three different purples too this should probably be a little bit lighter so I'll move this over here and complementary color of blue will make it grayer so you can go like this add a little bit of orange and any complementary color mixed together you're gonna get a grayer color so complementary colors are pretty tricky but they can be misleading if you don't understand how to use them so uh, a lot of Instructors will say, oh, we'll use complementary colors. They always look good together, but that's not true. Well, I made a video on that that I'll link, but definitely not true. You gotta control the contrast and gotta incorporate grays to control them sometimes, the neutrals, all that stuff. So here we're making this grayish blue. We'll finish this and then I'll lighten up that purple. Just show you a little bit of color mixing, you know. So that's a nice little gray, grayish blue. And I can lighten that up. Don't want my gray too dark. So if you control the value of your grays, you can have them lay on top of this light yellow and not be so eye-catching, so contrasty. So I just got to play with that contrast, see what looks best. But we'll go with this for now. I'll lighten up this purple. It's like a bluish purple. And then I've got the reddish purple over here. So nice color variation always try and include color variation in your paintings it's going to add a lot of interest a lot of harmony to your painting all right so there's a little bit of color mixing for you now let's go back to scraping this on probably finger rub some color into the corners and we'll work with some pink on the bottom too i really like the way that looks that texture right there and then this too so see if we can keep some of that Scrape that off. Always wipey wipe, you know. And let me just finger rub some in this corner here. Purple's the complementary color of yellow. So we're gonna play with purples. It's gonna look really nice, but we're gonna control it. You can't just blindly throw purples on there and have it look good. Sometimes it works, but you wanna use your knowledge to control the colors. Don't just, you know, throw colors anywhere. Let's go over here. I'll add a little green too. Let's see. Let me rub this in real quick. And so I'll do a light green because, you know, color variation. We'll see how it turns out. And if you think you got to make the perfect mark every time before you start, or you got to just know like what to do, you don't have to do that. You just lay it down, lay something down, use your knowledge to control it and to keep going from there. Just build it. Pretend you're a sculptor. You start with a piece of marble and you slowly chip away at it. You don't have to know exactly the perfect chisel mark each time. You just chip away at it and you can adjust it if you need to. So I'm gonna use some pinks down here. I'll probably go with some of these and we'll probably go up lighter too. And we want this horizon line nice and soft. Aerial perspective is a technique you can use to create depth and atmosphere. And that's what we're gonna try and do. We'll go through all the techniques, but this is one of them that I always like to focus on when laying in this horizon line. You see how much those colors pop off that gray pink, right? Looks pretty nice. Oh, let's brush some of this in. I'm gonna use a little bit of purple up here. 
and I want to cover up most of this. There's just a little bit of white showing through that base layer. Make sure that's covered up. All right now I'm just putting on colors. I have a decent idea where I'm going but we'll see how it plays out. And up here I will probably add, let's add some of this grayish blue. Looks fine. Cover that up a little bit. All right, starting to get filled in. Let me get the big brush, this big boy here. Nice and rough. I always scrub in the base layer with this brush so you can see how beat up it is. Perfect for whatever you want. Abstract art, you don't need fancy brushes. You just need something to make a mark, which is why I use my fingers for the end of the brush, whatever you want. Like this, you can scratch in. So I'm just gonna try and cover up most of these areas and keep the ones I like. So I really like this area and this area, so I'll try and cover up the rest. And this first layer is just gonna be just a soft brushed in layer, nothing too thick, because we need to lay paint on top of it. If this second layer is too thick, then the next layer will be difficult to lay paint onto. And it might cause problems when it's drying, so. Like this modeling paste dries really quick. Anything that dries quicker, you gotta put it on first. So it's all about drying time. And then this thin base layer. So I wipe that off so it's a thin layer of paint. So it's gonna dry quicker than this layer right here that I'm not gonna wipe off. Brush some of this over here. Let's get some gray in there. When you incorporate grays into your painting, you'll start to see that these normal colors will start popping more. All right, I'll cover up this area here. Probably blend out pink to yellow. That'll create like an orangish looking horizon line. And I wanna go a little bit lower actually. I usually, if you're into rule of thirds, I would recommend avoiding it. So it misleads you to create imbalanced composition. So this is looking a little third-ish and I don't like that. So my horizon line will be probably down here, coming down here. So let's just blend some of this. And if it starts mixing too much, you can wipe off your brush. See how it's mixing up here? But I like that kind of, we'll see how it works out. A little bit of blue in there, that's nice. We will be adding blue, that's for sure. Just hints of it though. All right, let's keep going around this and then we'll put in the design. Let's rub up here. I don't want this too high contrasty, this edge. I call that edge flicker, but some might refer to it as a vignette also. So it's keeping the interest on the inside of that frame, but also your edge flicker is high contrast near the edge. So if I put this here, you can see how high contrasty it is. It's just grabbing a lot of attention. So that's definitely not good to have there. Let's rub it off. And I'll squiggle inside so I get all these little grooves. If you have too many of these little grooves here, this under this base layer showing through and it's showing contrast, your upper layer is lighter than the, the base layer, you'll start getting distractions. So just keep the ones you like, like these two are really nice. So I might as well cover up, you know, the other ones that aren't really interesting. All right, now let me add a couple swashes of pink. That's fine. And I'll do the water and then we'll do the design. See how this up here, if you just, if your base layer is dry and you lightly go over the top, that base layer with a brush or your finger or whatever, you'll see how it creates this texture here. And that's desirable sometimes, pretty nice. So I'll show you with the brush, you can go over it quickly. See how that texture is there? Looks pretty nice, but that is too high contrasty. So I'll go in with some, some of this pink. And then just finger rub, that looks fine. All right, let's do the water. We'll get the water on there. Well, I'll use the palette knife for this. Just go in and got the same aqua colors. Got three different variations. And I'll probably add, probably add a lot of blues in the water this time. We'll see how it works out. Gotta get this on here and then we can start controlling the colors. See how it's working together. And this upper layer, I probably want to use lighter blue so it can blend in better, create that foggy effect on the horizon line. I'm just gonna brush all this in so I'm just scraping it on real quick. Rub, rub, rub. And probably 
add a little bit of purple. It's reddish purple here, let's see. We'll lift this up here. Cover up some purples, covering up some of this white that was still exposed to. So, so far my eyes are not liking the this bluish green with the yellow, but we'll see what we can do to harmonize that. So already I'm identifying areas that I wanna work on that aren't fitting well with the color theme, but we will make it work. Yes, we will. And you keep any interesting areas, like uh, mm, that's kind of interesting. I'll keep it just in case. And then brush in the rest of this stuff. Softly brush in. If anything looks too perfect, you can always scribble into it. In a Berth Morissette article I did a while back, uh, I learned a ton from her, and she would make a perfect mark, but then she'd be like, ah, oh, that looks too good. And she'd go in and mess it up, so I called that destructionism. So if you go in and mess up things that look too perfect, you know, that looks pretty cool. All right, let's go in and fix this because it's not harmonizing very well. I want to do that before we design. Let me add, probably this blue will help it. We need a nice transition from this dark green, this aqua green here to the yellow. And we need to make the colors look good. So I think this blue is going to do the trick. Just got to add it on there real quick and see where we're going. I like this area, so I'll keep it and then brush on there. Yeah, it's starting to look good, so I feel confident that's that's going to make it look nice. Add some pinks there. I don't want to get too involved, so I'm going to draw the design. Now, these two areas, probably, should we keep them? Yeah, we'll keep them. They're both interesting, and they're balanced, so let's just keep them for now. Let's draw on that design. I just grabbed a small brush, and I draw on the grid first. So just go corner to corner and you can divide the canvas into half first if you like that can help guide you in the right direction this is a four-third canvas it's a 12 inches by nine inches so when you do the math on that it breaks down to 1.333 which is the four-third grid so if you break down four divided by three that's your math for you so simple third grader math can help you find the grid ratio of the canvas. So we've got the halves in there, basic, you know, rough half. And then you can just go down here and point to the center and that'll help you guide to the next one. I got a lot of nice areas here that I want to just keep. So probably won't scratch into them. And then up here, go into that corner. Okay, and then the reciprocals, those will intersect the major diagonals at 90 degrees. So say this one, this major diagonal, we're gonna go from each corner and intersect the major diagonals at 90 degrees. So if we're pointing this way, if you look at the four third grid, you'll notice that the reciprocals cross the horizontal center line just by a little bit. So that can help us guide our mark as well. So just come down this way and we're creating a T there. See that 90 degree angle? It makes a T shape. Then we just parallel it. Go to this corner here, make a T. But I've got a lot of areas of interest on there, probably all on that reciprocal. So I just gotta make sure I keep them. So I'll just go to that, it's fine. Now we'll do the next one. Same with this, probably gonna go over on this side of the horizontal center line. And we're gonna run it up and make that T right here. There we go. And we're gonna parallel that, come to this corner right here and make the T across this major diagonal. And we've got area of interest there, so I'm just gonna skip over that. And they'll probably end up right over here on the opposite side of that horizontal center line. So right about here. There we go. And we check the T, and that looks pretty good. All right, there's our grid. Pretty simple, huh? All right, now we've got the triangle. Let's do a triangle. And I'll put a list of all the composition techniques we're gonna cover, but the triangle's next. And we'll do a triangle, try and encompass these two marks here. Let's see what we can do. Let's go this way. I'm trying to parallel this. Let's see. I won't be able to parallel the grid diagonals. That's fine though. We'll go up here. We're going to try and hit this right here, and then we'll come down this way. Same distance from the edge, right over here. This is an eye, the intersection point, that's considered an eye. So we'll just go straight down to that eye, and that's going to create an equal triangle. Okay, we've got a triangle now, and it's on the edge of this mark. And just rub in these areas. There we go. 
and this is on that edge that's fine now we're gonna do 90 degree angles and usually we can add these they're already in the grid but we can add them to generate interest in a certain direction so if there's an area of negative space we can generate interest in that section so if we want interest here we can just run a 90 degree angle that way there's our 90 degree angle with the triangle so it's tied into the triangle and make sure they're tilted you don't want them straight up and down like a telephone pole and we'll just do another one probably let's see this is almost paralleling almost if we take this major diagonal and then the, the diagonal of the triangle we might as well make that parallel almost paralleling so all we got to do is bring this bottom edge out just a little bit more past that eye and we'll be paralleling and that'll work fine I like that better. And the 90 degree angle looks pretty much the same anyway. So we'll bring this down, draw the edge of that better, make sure it's paralleling. This is pretty much paralleling there. Just bring it out just a touch. And we're about inch and a half away from that edge. So this one's an inch and a half away from that edge. So it looks pretty equal. And then this part that's coming inside of the triangle, I'll just cover part of that up. There we go. And this part, we can just keep it as is, fine. All right, that's our triangle. Our 90 degree angles are good. We'll just use the ones that are in the grid already. So this is paralleling. This edge of the triangle is paralleling the grid. So we'll just run this up the reciprocal. And we've already got our 90 degree angle and we want interest in this area, so that's fine. Now we want to create our arabesque and that's gonna, the arabesque is a nice elegant movement around your composition. So we need that to kind of glue the design techniques together. It isn't promoted by the grid. A lot of techniques are like this 90 degree angle and triangles and things, but the arabesque isn't. So we need to add that curvilinear element in there. So that's what we're gonna do next. And just pretend you're a race car driver and you're just gonna curve around these design techniques that you have in there and try and create like a little racetrack. And I'm gonna come down around this way to encompass this interesting area here and let's go i'm gonna go up this diagonal this is the major diagonal and then let's go inside this triangle here and we can come down to the water and there's already marks there that'll help our movement so we'll keep that for now see how it works out we can come up this movement here this brush mark creating a movement and we'll circle back around let's go I'm looking at this reciprocal here and I can probably circle around that, but I wanna go actually up to this left side of the triangle. Let's do that. There we go. And we'll do one little loop around this 90 degree angle and come back around. And let's complete the loop. We started here, so we'll just complete the loop here. Come down here. We're running back into this arabesque. And then we'll create this closure here. There's a nice little loop-de-loop. -loop. And that leads us to ellipses. So we just made one ellipse. You can complete these shapes if you want. This is another ellipse here. And we've got a bigger one coming down this way. So we'll complete that one. That's just coming around this way. So the way the law of continuity works, if you haven't studied Gestalt psychology, check out my website or I have other videos on this YouTube channel. But Gestalt psychology is basically visual perception. And if you understand the principles, you can control the way the viewer sees your work. So the law of continuity means we can connect certain areas and create unity in that area just by small little areas of contrast. It's like a dot to dot image, it leaves our eyes. So the arabesque plays off that principle, the ellipses, a lot of these do the 90 degree angle and coincidences, which leads us to coincidences. Now, coincidences are edge to edge relationships. So say this edge of the ellipse is gonna meet a flower up here or that 90 degree angle. So there's a coincidence there and we can keep that controlled, just add some contrast there and some contrast on this edge here. And that's a coincidence. And it can go vertically, horizontally or diagonally. So we've got enough coincidences. These appear all over the work and they're promoted by the grid, but also on this diagonal, we can create dot to dot contrast on that diagonal, whatever we want. But let's go to gamut next. That's the repeating diagonals and that creates a hidden rhythm within your composition. And usually I like to just find the edge of maybe the triangle or a 90 degree angle and repeat it. Let's see. Let's just repeat one down here. This is just repeating the grid and we're also creating another 90 degree angle. See that 90 degree angle there? And we've got the repeating diagonals. So let's, this is repeating pretty much. That's the triangle. And we'll do one, let's do one more. Let's go up here and repeat the diagonal of this triangle. So we can go up here, that's good. 
and I'm gonna add a little bit of color so we can keep track of it. There we go. All right, that's our design. Now we can start laying in shapes and color balancing and all that stuff. That's the exciting part. So let's do our first mark. I probably wanna make a paler yellow. This is pretty intense still. I wanna make a paler yellow that's quieter. Just add more white and that'll add even more variation. I've got one, two, three, four, five different yellows now. It's gonna add some nice variation. Uh, let me just scrape in some of this here. That looks good. Okay, now let me do a flower. And we'll go with a bold statement, red. Red always attracts a lot of attention, so let's be strategic on where we wanna place this. Probably want to place it. Let's go for, I usually do like the tip of the triangle, but let's go for like maybe this area here. It's where the ellipse meets and the edge of the triangle. So we'll just do a nice blob of red there. And then we'll make that surrounded by white. You could do surrounded by pink if you want. You wanna do that, go with some pink. I put a lot of tape on this just so I could find it easier within the pile of brushes. I'll show you all my brushes, just tons of brushes. Use however many you want, but more is better. You can add nice variety and hierarchy with if you use smaller brushes and bigger brushes. You start getting that small, medium, large aspect of the hierarchy and that's what you want in your paintings at least that's one thing you could desire in your paintings it doesn't have to be a perfect circle i just like to have it completed like right this area here has a little more yellow showing so i just want to make sure that's completed and then also here it's showing yellow so i just want to complete that so it's got visual clarity I want nice clarity between the colors that looks pretty nice, huh? Let's add some grays. So I'm gonna add probably, let's do some bluish gray. Just see where it leads us. And I'll grab a soft brush, probably a bigger one. And we'll do it around this area here and see where we go. This isn't planned, it's just going off your knowledge. Going with intuition, gut instinct, that's basically just going off no knowledge at all. So don't do that. That's not a good way to create something beautiful. You can find happy mistakes and that's probably why a lot of people do that, but that's just going with aesthetic instead of going with your knowledge. You should try and incorporate aesthetic with structure. And that's the chef's kiss in my opinion. So let me add, Here's the edge of the triangle and that ellipse. So we're gonna curve down here. Let's go like this and create that. Here's that bigger ellipse. So I'll try and incorporate that as well. That's fine. And I wanna have this a nice brush mark, but also expressive and also filled in like right here. It's showing a lot of yellow still inside. Just wanna make sure that's all covered up. Come up here. That looks good and you can finger smudge whatever you like scratch in see i'm scratching in the direction of that 90 degree angle now let's do some orange purple is going to really look nice on the, the yellow we just got to be strategic about it uh let's do i'm going to add let's do the orange but i'm going to add some white around it and i'll do the bold orange and let me just add the white first probably i'm going to do try and use this filbert brush and add some white i don't know if it'll work because this brush is kind of stiff and we're adding wet paint onto the paint so let's see i want to have it kind of on the edge of this ellipse and on the edge of the triangle so we'll do this right here that looks fine and then i'll take the palette knife small one and we'll do a bold orange just on the tip of that just the tip and that looks fine and then a lot of things i like to do for color variation and harmony is when you add that orange on there try and adding a lighter orange or a darker orange you know get that variety going and it really adds to the composition and the overall color harmony so let's just add a couple dots of this and i'll use a different brush see that looks nice and we can add maybe some red in there We're on that edge of the triangle. Looks pretty good. And I'll add an intense yellow dot in there with this brush. There we go, starting to come together. And we'll add a little bit of light blue. Complete this tip of the triangle. And we'll put some down here. 
and then I'm gonna add some dots of blue in there. Let's see this intense blue. Let's do that. Put it over here. Now let's squiggle in some white and we should be good and we'll start balancing it. Take that vertical center line. You wanna balance the weight of all these shapes from left to right, like a teeter totter. So right now we're getting heavy on the right side. So we'll go back in and balance towards the left. I want a little bit of white. Let's see right here on this ellipse. That looks good. I'll go in and erase some of these construction lines. There we go. Also got to emphasize this area. We'll add some colors there, but let's go back to the left side and see what we can do. Now, if you squint, you've got, this does add a lot of weight. It is actually adding, it's almost equal weight, I would say. Probably could still use a little bit of weight on this side now that I'm looking at it and squinting. But we'll add interest on this side. And what interest do we want to add? Let's see. We'll add some of this grayish purple. It's kind of a lighter purple. We'll do it on this arabesque. You can see on that yellow, it kind of looks bluish. So colors will vary just depending on their neighboring color. And let's do over here. That's good. I want to do a darker one inside. Grab a different brush here. I'll do a dark reddish purple. Nice. And let's go with another brush. Let's add a little bit of light blue to the edge of this. Gonna mix it with this grayish blue here, just to darken it just a touch. And we'll go in with this, soften that edge. You don't want your brush work to look all fudgety, you know? You gotta go in, make a confident mark, and just leave it. I mean, sometimes I'll scribble and scrub and all that stuff, but I like it to look confident like that, so scratch in there all right how can we make that area look even better we'll add some pinks probably some red and let me use a different brush gotta get a small one we'll add some pinks first some lighter pinks and remember color variation so just go in and add a couple of additional spots of color that are different. Let's get a different brush. Let's go with some light pink around this. And that's pretty much the same value as this yellow. It's not sticking out too much. If you squint, it kind of disappears and that's fine. I'm gonna add some interest up here on this one. We don't have any greens yet either. We gotta keep in mind some greens. We just got it on the edges here. All right, let's go with a little bit of, I'm gonna use a little bit of this grayish pink and I need kind of like a medium sized brush just to get it in there. Let's see. We'll scribble it in here. Usually I add that before the flower, but just going with it. Now, any brush stroke you add onto your composition, you can make it tie into the design. So these brush strokes, I can parallel the grid. I can repeat certain shapes on there. So if we're adding this triangle here, I can repeat this diagonal right here with a brush stroke. See that? Now let me mix, this is the base layer, this yellow. So I can mix some of that with this pink, this darkish pink, and then you can get a softer look when you mix it. So I'll show you. So you can soften that edge up a little bit if you want, make it fade into the background. Okay, I'm keeping those brush strokes nice and quick, looking good. All right, let me add a little bit more. I want it darker by the flower here. That looks good. Now I'll add some pink and red dots in there. Should look nice. This is the alizarin crimson paint mixed with white. So it's nice intense pink. Let's add 
Let's see how big we want it here. Let's add a nice dollop. That looks good. Probably add some nice intense yellow dots in there too. That's good for now. And I'll add some white. This is that repeating diagonal right here. So I'll just add some white, scrub it on there. That looks good. And usually I finish the triangle first, but this time I was just messing with the back and forth, the balance. So let's try and finish the triangle. And it's almost complete. We've just got this tip to work with, this lower right corner, and then also the bottom part. So let's go in with, well, you know what I forgot to do is mix yellowish green. So we'll look at some more mix in here. I'll show you. That's probably too much green. And this is green with a little bit of white added to it. Nothing straight out of the tube except for the white. So I'm gonna add, get some yellow off my other palette. Add some yellow here. We're gonna add green yellow and then we're going to lighten that up with some white and we'll see how much we need here don't want it too dark and we don't want it too light and we don't want it too green and we don't want it too yellow we want it in between all that stuff so let's see could probably add more yellow that's looking good nice transition from yellows to greens right so we're going to use that let me see if i can use some of this on my palette knife and we'll tie it into the bottom of this triangle here there's our first arc of serious green. We're getting into it. And I'll probably want to I'll rub out some of these construction lines. Let's see. Let me just rub out some of this here. Also got that arabesque. Let's add a little bit of this light green. And I'll switch my brushes. I'll add some more of this light green. And this is the ellipse and the edge of the triangle. So we're going to try and keep track of that. And I'll just add some of this. I don't want it to look like a triangle tip though, like obvious. I want to try and hide these design techniques. So let me go a little bit more with this light green. Blend it into the yellow green. Now I'm going to add a dollop of dark green on top of all this. Let's go with this. There we go. So there's our triangle tip right there. And then the edge. Let's add a little bit more of this green to expand it a little bit. And then I can add a yellow dot inside that. That looks good. I'm gonna expand that just a little bit more though. Grab some of this. Expand it out just a little bit. Getting fudgy fudgy there. Let me add a little bit of this. I don't want the dark green on the, the yellow. I want to add it, this light green around it. All right, now let's scratch into it. It looks too nice. It's good. Now let's add a couple of blue dots, shall we? Blue dots, grab the intense, and we'll do it right in this area where there's yellow showing. That looks fine. We'll go with that for now, finish the triangle. Let's go to the top here and make that stand out a little bit better. So what should we do up here? What do you think? Some pinks? We don't want it too high contrasty. Let's do this alizarin crimson. Let's see. Let's go with this and we'll see what it looks like. Just hover over the area and see if it looks fine. And it does. So we'll add this. And I'm thinking I could add a white mark inside of it. So let's grab this smaller one. Just want it right on that tip. You gotta get it at a certain angle so it comes off you got to get enough on your palette knife so it comes off good and it leaves a nice dollop all right we're getting there huh kind of looks cool let's finish the triangle still going around and i want to emphasize these two areas next let's add some green remember we are we add little squiggles of green for like stems so we can just do this and there's the triangle completed on that side and i'm going to cover up some of these construction lines real quick let's use this filbert brush here grab some yeller if you use different values for your yellow to cover up some of these construction lines just gonna add a nice little texture to it so it pops out just a little bit just adds a nice little interest so go ahead and feel free to do that we've got this covered this covered i do see this is not completely straight but that's fine and then this ellipse coming around here i don't want to lose track of that i can finish that off if i just cover this up and then i'll finish that off let's see let's add a couple red dots Sometimes you gotta twist your paintbrush to get the paint off. That's what I did there. And then I'll add some white dots. Be a squiggle. 
add orange. Let me see how this orange looks. I'm gonna just make it right here for now. Let's go with that for now. And we've got to complete this bottom of the triangle. And I'll go back in and work those areas. So Squint, what do you think? How's the balance looking? I think it looks pretty balanced so far. And that vertical center line, this adds a lot of nice weights and so does this. Colors are popping. Not uh, completely harmonized for my taste, but we're getting there. Now let's go on the bottom of this triangle and finish this off so we can get going on the other areas. And I'm thinking I'll probably incorporate this ellipse here in the bottom right there and maybe come down this major diagonal. Let's pick a color though. Let's just use something real subtle and we'll use this grayish yellow. And we'll come down this ellipse and then the bottom of the triangle and go that way. Let's just go like this, cover up that area, the construction line. Do a nice little swipe of yellow in there. Maybe we can parallel this major diagonal like that. And then I'm gonna cover up these areas here. Let me cover up this one. That looks good. A little bit more up here. All right, now what are we gonna do with this grayish yellow? Well, we can add a lighter purple on there. That would probably look nice. Let me add actually this medium purple and then surrounded by white. This medium purple here, the reddish purple. But I wanna expand this just a touch because I'm gonna need enough room to add that white. So let me just make that there. That looks fine. And it's gonna be a little thick probably, so I gotta squish that down a bit. We'll add this purple right inside here. Medium purple with white could probably do. Let's try something interesting. We'll try this dark purple. It's gonna add a lot of weight, so just gotta keep that in mind. We'll add a nice area of dark purple. And put the lighter reddish purple inside that. And then we'll surround it by white. How's that for you, huh? There we go. Cool. Now we're working with complementary colors. So yellow is complementary to purple, but we surround it by a neutral and we're playing with the contrast in there. So looks pretty nice. Now we can add probably some yellow dots around that to accentuate this grayish yellow and the complementary color of purple. So let's do more intense yellow. And we could do probably orange. Let me see. Let's see if orange will work. Eh, I'll keep orange out of it for now. Let's add some lighter yellow. Just a couple dots. I'm gonna go with a nice brush of blue and let me erase this construction line there. Can, let's get rid of some of these construction lines right here. Let's go down here, finish that one. Now I'll add a little bit of blue on there. I want a nice brush mark. We'll use this round brush and go with the lighter blue and I'll probably just squiggle something on. We can go next to this and then squiggle it down this major diagonal. So we'll try that. That's pretty thick right there. So let's squish it down a bit. I'm gonna do a really intense dollop of yellow right next to that. There we go. So far so good. And let's go with some of this. A little bit of white. And I'll erase this construction line. A little white. All right, triangle's definitely done. Is there anything distracting? Right now I see something that's catching my eye and it's the edge of this. So either I could scratch into it or I'll soften it up. So how to soften that is you just take this color and mix it with the yellow and we'll get a in-between color and that'll soften it. So yellow with blue, did I already mix that? No, so we'll take this and then we'll mix this. We'll get a nice in-between color and that'll help soften it. You see that soften over here maybe soften this looking good now let's finish these two areas remember we were trying to get back to those so we got to make sure these orange spots i put on there look good and so far to me they don't look that good they could look better now let's do something interesting we'll surround it by purple this reddish purple and then we can go back in and surround that with white and see what that looks like
this tape on here is kind of annoying, but it helps me find the brush pretty quick. It's gonna complete this just a little bit better. There's an area of yellow I'm trying to get at, so I just gotta touch it a little bit better. That's good. Let's do this one just surround it in white, and then we'll surround this one in white. Add some nice variation to our flowers here. Doesn't have to be perfect. I just like to have enough paint around it to create the effect I want. So not a thin layer, I want a thick layer of paint. And I want all that yellow covered up. There we go. Bloody nice, right? It's looking good. It's an interesting color. But you know what? I think the lighter orange might look better. Let's try that. I'll do one more dollop on there. Yeah, I like that better. Now let's cover this one up. Let's just circle this one with white now. We got a nice dollop of orange inside there. Make it better. Looking good, huh? Let's add some green leaves like we like to do. I'm gonna cover up this construction line here. This is part of that 90 degree angle we were trying to keep intact. So let's go down here. There's a nice little leaf. And let's do another one. Let's go over here. And then one more right over on this side somewhere. Go down that ellipse there. I'm gonna create some smaller marks with the green, the lighter green. We'll do one more green up here, do a squiggle. And I want a little bit more up here, that looks good. This area of red that I was holding on to that coincidence here, we're gonna emphasize that. Let's just go with a nice dollop of red. And we'll surround that with some pinks, some pink dots. Let's go with the alizarin crimson mix. I'll just add some pink dots here. Let's actually add some of this lighter pink. to this one okay so I'm making my marks but I don't want them all looking the same so that's why I'm adding squiggles and scratching into it you know I want it to look a little bit different add a nice variety let's go up here and see if I can add some green there it's nice nice balance so now it's in the middle and at the top and then we've got that greenish blue at the bottom that's some nice balance there we're looking pretty good in this area pretty much. We can work the corners later once we get everything in place. Let's finish off these areas. I wanna add some spots of color inside these areas to accentuate them a little bit better. So we'll add some yellow dots maybe. And I'll go back with some purple dots that might look pretty nice. Now let me go back in with some purple. Now this purple's lighter and it's gonna be similar contrast as that yellow and they're complementary colors, but that means they'll sit next to each other. They won't stand out. They'll probably clash a little bit, but being next to this purple here will make it look a little better. So that doesn't look too bad, right? Let me add some down here, scribble. And let's see, let's work our way down towards the water. We'll come down this ellipse here and then work that ellipse and then we'll go into the water. And I think I need a couple touches of red in this area here. That's a sloppy mark, so I'm gonna go in with some thicker paint, make sure it's not mixing. There we go. And I'll add some pinks around it. This pink is good. Cool. I'll add a little bit more pink, some lighter pinks. All right, that looks fine. Sometimes you can look in your phone because it increases the contrast just a bit. So you can see like this, the whole outside is a little bit more contrasty than I like. So we'll go back in and fix all that stuff. But for now, let's work our way down this ellipse and into the water. So let's add, maybe I'm gonna work our way down and I'm gonna add a brush of blue. See how that starts to look. We'll go down this one. I'll add a bigger brush mark. Scratch into it a little cover up some construction lines. This side is still high contrast there, see? Well, let's try and just 
finger smudge this out a little, soften it up. Go with some gray yellow. There we go. All these construction lines can be rubbed out. That looks a little better. See, I said we were going down that ellipse and I get sidetracked by trying to correct that, but it just evolves as it evolves. Just trying to fix things as I notice them, but keep the design in mind. So let's keep working down. And I think this side needs a little bit more blue to keep that balance. So let's add a little bit more. We'll go right like that. And this construction line here, I'll probably just try and emphasize that with some pink and then I'll erase it. Let me just erase it now. And we'll get some pinks going on there. Some light pink maybe. That looks fine. Now let's work down. We're gonna go into the water. We gotta fix this horizon line, make sure it's balanced. While I'm squinting now, this area is really contrasty. So is this area, and then so is that. So we'll try and fix that. We'll go with some light pinks and scratch around in there a little bit. Let's go with this light pink here. This is a stiff brush. Oh boy, I need something softer than that. This is a soft one. So get this and we'll brush into this part right there. And then the other contrasty part looking good and then this area i wanted to keep and let's go in and scratch some of that out that's contrasty but i like it just too much see how thick that paint is so we can just go in and scratch some out and reapply it let's go with a little bit of this yellow and then some pink let's go with the alizarin crimson Ooh, now we're talking. Horizon line's good for now. Let's do the water real quick and work with the palette knife. We're gonna bring this up here so I can get a good mark going and try and simultaneously wipe it off. Let's go with this lighter blue and I wanna mix it with this so it's not too light, but it's a little darker and we'll go with that for now. Make sure it's nice and flat on your palette knife. You can go straight across. Let's go like this and wipe it. And then I'm gonna skip over any areas that I wanna keep, so that alizarin crimson mark right there I wanna keep. And then just swipe it up. You get the feel for it. It's just go with what you see. And we gotta complete this ellipse, but I wanna just brush this one on here real quick. That's fine. And I'm gonna take some dark red, purple, and finish this ellipse here. There we go. So the ellipse is done. Now we can finish the water. All right, we're gonna add a little bit darker aqua. Let's go with this one. That looks good, keep going. All right, that's looking good to me so far. Now let's add a little bit of blue. We'll go in with the smaller Pella knife. Let's add this blue. We'll add a little blue down here. I'm gonna make one more mark and then we'll add some intense blue too. Just a touch. Let's see where we're gonna add it. Right over here, maybe. See how nice that looks? We'll add it over here. That looks good. I'm thinking I wanna add a little bit of yellow, light yellow scrapes in there. Now let's add just a little bit of pink and we're gonna add some yellow. So but we'll do that with a brush, smaller brush. Just touches, let's see here. We'll do the light pink. Actually, I wanna do maybe this one will go in maybe down here and then over here and over here we didn't add any of this teal yet either so we got to do that still and i'm going to add a little bit of yellow in the water too because you want the colors kind of reflecting if in real life there would be colors reflecting into the water as well so we'll do that not going to be any type of realism painting but we want to add that just touches and it could be this grayish yellow let's see and you want to try and avoid the very edge since it's going to add a lot of contrast. That looks good. And squint your eyes, see if anything stands out too much. I'm going to add a little bit of white as well. This mark here, this bottom mark, it's just a little too close. And I want to add maybe some, some of this to just help it blend in a bit. That looks fine. Okay, let me add just a touch of white in there. And the contrast, usually you want this to fade, this horizon line to fade. So when you're squinting, you want the contrast more forward. Let's add it right around there. And we'll add another one right about here. And I'm squinting. Let's scratch some of that and add just a little bit. Let me wipe this off better though. Let's get a better mark. 
scratch marks there, scratch marks there, smudge it maybe. That looks good. All right, squint and you shall see. So it looks pretty good so far. I still think this area needs softened a bit. So does this area. So I'll add some lighter pinks. If I get rid of that yellow, I don't think I'll like that alizarin crimson as much. I like the way that looks together. It does cause a lot of attention to be drawn there. If you squint, it's got a lot of contrast. So if I'm covering it up, it looks good still. I just, I really like that color, but I'm gonna get rid of it. There we go. And I'll add as white right on top of that. That's better. It's not so contrasty. Sometimes you gotta get rid of the things you love, you know? Let's go up here and squinting. Let's see, it's all right. I'll add some yellow there. A little better mark there. Even a better mark, let's go with that. That's better. The paint was mixing a little too much on that first mark. So let's go back over here. This is kind of contrasty. I wanna keep this area here and let's match it with some scratch marks on that. So we're at least balanced. If this is distracting us here, we want some marks here just to try and keep that balance. And we can go with that blue too. Let's see, let's scratch into that. There we go. See how the blue's inside there? The blue's inside that one now. Let's work around the edges and go from there. Let's try and soften these edges a little bit by adding this lighter blue here and a little bit of yellow. That's too light. Let's go with the grayish yellow. Just using the fingers to rub it in there. Now we gotta take care of this top part. See, I like that texture it's creating up there, but not for the sacrifice of creating high contrast. And just a little bit more. Okay, now this area, green. This area here. Definitely taking care of that primary color of yellow, right? It's looking good. Let's smooth this out a little bit more. Now I'm just squinting as I do this and softening it up as I go. Squinting looks pretty good. This area's got a little bit of contrast, but it's fine. Let's start adding some colors around the edges. See if we can harmonize this anymore. Grab a smaller brush and let's go with some squiggles first. Never have enough squiggles. Let me go up here and balance this. And that's too high contrast, so I'm gonna knock it back. Some blue. Oh, looking good. Okay. Just wanna make sure it looks good before we start laying in dots. All right, let's add a squiggle of, let's see. We haven't used this yellow green for a bit, so let's add a little bit here. And I add a little over here. And we can start to color balance that with some pinks and maybe some purples. Do this reddish purple over here. And we'll add some pinks to that. And let's add some light yellow. This squint, make sure it's not high contrast. That's fine, the little dot, it's not gonna hurt. See how it's starting to tie in that main yellow color and harmonize. I'm gonna add a little bit of this pink here. Let's add a different brush though. Use a different brush. Let's see if this will look good. So far so good, but we gotta color harmonize that green. The way we do that is add more green around it, or I can add a little dollop of green inside this one. I squished that down too much, so let's go in. I'll add one over on this side, but let's make it, let's make it orange. Let's go with some orange over on this one. We need a steady hand for this. There we go. Let's see, dark green on this side. Some more dark green on this side. I'm gonna add some white, some more white here. Need some light blue. Let's mix some white with some blue. gonna come down here, add some more. The 
see how those marks are all looking the same so i'm going to come in and mix it up a little bit maybe add a different brush Go up here and add some pink right up here. We'll work these edges here. Probably add just a touch more of this grayish yellow here too. It blends in better. There we go. And let's go with a little bit of this. Just wanted to create a movement up that way. Let's add a few dots of this color over here. some color dots up here too. And add some variety. Mix it up. We gotta add that teal on there still. We'll see what that does to the composition. Let's add some yellow dots or squiggles, whatever. squinting and let's see I'm gonna add a little bit of white just a couple brushes of white this is starting to get too much blue let's add a couple dots of white down here let's add some interest Looks good. Now let's add some purples. Let's see what the purples look like here. Going in with this light purple. I'm gonna turn my brush over, see if it looks good. And where it looks good. Do it on this yellow. That looks fine. You had uh, some interest here with some brush strokes same contrast but i'm just adding some interest here looks like this side has a lot of green it it does have a lot of green so i want to add a little bit more green on this side just to try and help balance that let's make a flower down here let's see if it'll look good on this we'll add this green spot there and surround that with white This brush is getting a little old, so I think it's time to replace it because it's not letting the paint come off the brush so easy. When this brush is softer, it comes off a lot easier. There we go. Now let's add a couple white dots on this side. I need a different brush, let's see. So much blue in my white right here all right let's add just a touch more green on that side we need some of that dark green and let's do this over here i want more green so let's make that thicker let's go back in here and add just a little bit of red up here with some pink. Add a squiggle. All right, I'm squinting. Now I think we need a little bit more contrast in this area and then we can color check. Maybe contrast here and just a touch over here. So let's go with this. And let's go with this. 
and let's add not green because we just balanced it let's add purple i think this one will look better with a little bit of purple this reddish purple next to it so i'm going to do that just add a little bit maybe i'll add a dollop of pink on top of that let's see bigger doll than that let's add a little bit more purple surrounding that makes that purple pop out a little bit better now let me add a little bit of purple on this side but we don't want it high contrast too high contrast so let's add a little bit of this and let's see I don't want to cover up this area I like that area so we'll add it right here just a little bit of this lighter purple and we'll put some red inside there. And I'll add just a couple touches of red on there and we'll color check. Just add some dots of pink. How about that? And some dots of white. All right, that looks good for right now. Let's go back in and let's color check it. The way we do that is I just cut my hand over it and check each section for nice, juicy, delicious colors and make sure everything's harmonized. So I'll have to do it down here and then I can show you anything up here through the screen, how it looks. So let's check this lower quadrant. I think I'm gonna add some green. Let me add a couple touches of green in the water. See, I didn't add any green in the water and I think for me, sometimes this lighter green looks good there. Let's add it, I'm gonna make it just a touch lighter. Notice add a little mark, let's see. Let's go across here. And then I'll do one on the left side and that'll be good enough. Just little hints of color, you know? It's not distracting, but when you get closer and you look at a certain section, it starts to really look nice. There we go. That looks really nice to me. So let's keep going across and color checking this. So let's see. So now look at it right there. Looks pretty good. Even without this green, even without this flower here, cut it out and it looks good. It's got a nice amount of green in that section. We'll just keep working around here. That area looks good here. Got a nice balance from all the four colors. Red, green, blue, and yellow. Let's check this area. That looks pretty good. I'm thinking this this area i might go in and cover up some of that it's just a little distracting it's just a little busy so i'll go in i'll keep this upper area but i'll cover up this area here and maybe that'll help define these flowers a little bit better keep that visual clarity just add enough paint on the brush to not make it look too fudgy and add textures and things. I could scrape out these yellow dots. You know, I could just brush over them actually. So it's easier. And then I can go back in and add them. See how that controls that area better? It's just a little less chaotic. And I will probably soften this more. That looks good. And I'm gonna soften this more too. I'll just brush over this purple. Go a little lighter. That looks better. It's not so busy, right? Let me go back in and add just a couple yellow dots in there, like I had before. And it's less busy. And then I'll go back and control this area too. I'll use the same brush. Just go in and clean up this area a little bit. I'll go in and just brush over this yellow. And make it look a little less busy. Alright, that's good. I'll add those yellow dots back. Yeah, it's a little better, huh? All right, let's keep going around. And I know I see something that I'd like, color dispersion. So if a, an edge is too harsh, you can go back in and add little dots and it kind of softens the blow of that edge. So like this edge of this flower here, it's pretty harsh. This still looks good, but I could soften the blow of that by going in and adding little dots of pink around it. Let's add a little bit lighter pink and that'll look nice next to the green there 
See how it kind of softens that a little bit. You can add a red dot too. Let's see. There we go. A couple of red dots. Those are really small. So I don't want those to stand out. Say that's really small. I want to make sure it's visually clear that it's not a mistake. I do want small marks, so we can go back in and add super small marks over here too. And it balances it, makes it look unified. Now let's keep balancing. I gotta use my hands down here first. This area looks good. I think this upper area here is causing some, some problems. If you see, it looks all right, but I think these colors here don't mix as well as they could. So I think I will, I'm gonna get rid of that yellowish green, I think, or smudge it in or something. Same with this area here. I think the yellowish green, maybe it's the orange. I'll take the orange off and stuff and see what that looks like. I'll just scrape it off. Just creating some kind of ugly color over there, you know? And probably scrape this part off too. Now that everything's together, I wanna to make sure every, the whole image is harmonizing instead of just certain areas too. So let's go over this, this and blue. And this recreating this corner here. And I have some yellow, not too dark. And then it'll blend in with that dark blue. Looks a little better and I'll go in and add some colors there. I think this, Yellow green was throwing me off just a bit. It's looking a little better. This area keeps distracting my eyes, so I'll take that off. Add the light color to the dark color and you'll start to get that medium color. Let me see if I can just palette knife this, make it look interesting, not too contrasty. All right, I'm squinting. Making sure nothing's high contrast. It looks good so far. I wonder if this will look good over here. Just a little scratch. And up here, get rid of this too. Now let's go back in those corners and make them look good. Let's add a little bit of pink maybe. And we gotta add this teal still. We keep forgetting that. Let me add some darker blue. Just little drops, little dots of color up there. So let's add this green, this teal green that I keep forgetting. And we didn't use any of this grayish red either. Then we can add just a couple drops of that in the corners here. Rub it out. That's too much. So we gotta really rub it. That's better. Got that. Let me add a couple dots right around here, maybe. All right, let's add this green in here, this teal green. Just a couple drops, and I wanna add some to the water. Let's add it to the water first. Let's do a couple scrapes on the horizon line. That looks good. Add some dots around here. Just holding it over the area and seeing what looks good. This looks good. It'd probably look good near this purple. Mm, maybe right here. Let's do another one. Different brush. Hold it over and release. Just put it right here. One of those. Probably right here would look good. Let's grab a different brush. Come over here. Let me add just a little bit in this area here. All right, let's add a little bit more on this side here and one by this side here. Let's see, let's go down here. All right, that's good for that color. Now let's check the color balance again. Down here is looking good. I'm looking through this green. Looking good there. Looks good here. Let me just rub this in. A little high contrasty and I'm gonna do a couple of fingers Finger marks down here. Do some scrubbing with the finger down here. That's better. Down here. All right. That looks pretty good. OK, 
Okay, let's keep going around. I gotta use the screen. That looks pretty good. It all looks really nice. Up here looks better. Can add some interest on that top area there, right here. Probably just a little bit of blue would look nice and then that'll complete it. All right, let me just squint real quick. Balance looks pretty good. This is nice and soft here, not high contrast. Look nice, look nice. Close it in, look nice. Just looking at color variations, color harmony, and chewing up this delicious color and enjoying it like a meal. Scrumptious, like a dessert, yeah. All right, so that's it for this one, you guys. Thanks so much for joining in. I, I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit, let it marinate and see if I have to make adjustments later, but it's always good to maybe look at it through a mirror or use your phone and flip it. You can do that. You can use the monotone of your phone and look through it that way. I can show you what that looks like. It's a good way to check the contrast of the composition. So you just go in here and go to the monotone right here, mono, and you can just turn it this way and check your composition that way, see? Take a picture and flip it, whatever you want. All right, so I appreciate all your support. Check out the website when you can, join the newsletter, and I'll talk to you guys later.